Hey, this is Coach Boyce, and today we're going to do a real quick lesson over how to classify with a dichotomous key. So let's get going. Uh, what you see here on the left is a picture of a guy working in the field, a scientist. Now, when scientists are classifying organisms, specifically in the field, they use a tool, and that tool is a dichotomous key. Just to give you an example of what it looks like here, these are not small things. Um, this one is actually, you can kind of see the thickness of this book here, uh, not a small thing. Um, this is actually for plants of just north central Texas. This isn't even plants for the world. This is just north central Texas. So these dichotomous keys are very, very large. Now we will not be classifying today with a dichotomous key like this. We're going to be practicing on one a little smaller to get the idea. So let's take a look. Uh, we got a shark here. We're going to classify this shark. On the right, I have my dichotomous key. And this dichotomous key actually puts these sharks into different families. And so we're going to use this dichotomous key to predict what family this particular shark comes from. So let's go ahead and get started. Anytime we use a dichotomous key, and I'll just use my pointer here, um, we always start with number one. And then we work down through the questions until we can narrow it down to specifically what family that thing is in. All right, so we're just going to keep working down through it. So let's practice that here. The first one here is going to be, is the body kite-like if viewed from the top? Or is the body not kite-like if viewed from the top? And so if we look over here at our shark, I would say that is not kite-like. You know, when I think kite-like, I'm thinking like a stingray. And so this is not looking like a kite to me. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go with statement B here, which is the body is not kite-like. So what does that say to do? Go to number two. So we're going to come down here to number two, and we're going to ask this set of uh, questions about this organism. Does it have an anal fin present or, is the, uh, or absent, or is the anal fin present? So if we come over here and you're thinking, well, what is an anal fin? Well, if we zoom in right here, we'll see it does have an anal fin right there. All right, so it does have an anal fin present. So if we come back over here, what we'll see is anal fin present. It says go to number three. So if we come down here to number three, then we're looking for is there six gill slits present? If there is, we know what family this thing is in. Or is there five gill slits? So let's go zoom in over here and take a look. We have one, two, three, four, and five. So there are five gill slits there, which would meet the criteria of go to number four. Y'all getting the idea here? Now we're going to work down to number four. Dorsal fin with spines. No spines on dorsal fin. We come back and we look over here. Here is my dorsal fin. All right, I don't see any spines on that dorsal fin. So if we come back over here to the right, we'll notice that no spines on dorsal fin. Go to number five. Let's go to number five. Mouth is at the front of snout, or mouth is on the underside of the head. Well, if we come over here and look, we'll notice that here's the front of the snout. The mouth is actually back underneath the head. So if we come over here, go to number six. So we come down here to number six. Is the head expanded with eyes at the ends of the expansion? Like a hammerhead shark. Well, if we look over here, no, it is not. So the head is not expanded. So we go to number seven. Number seven says, is the top half of the caudal fin about the same size as the bottom half? Or is the top half of the caudal fin different in size? Well, caudal fin is that back fin. So let's go look over there. And that's this fin right here, this caudal fin. It looks to me, I would say, that the caudal fin, the top half, is about the same size as the bottom half. So if we look over here, we would say that is the family that this particular shark is classified in. So we just had the opportunity to classify that shark. Not too difficult, right? Now this particular dichotomous key doesn't stop right there. If we keep going, it goes down to 8, and then 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and you can see all the different families of sharks that fall there. So we can continue to classify some organisms even further. Uh, if I go back to here, obviously you can see here the key thing to these is that you always start right here with number one. So if I was to give you another shark and say classify it, guess where you would start? Right there at number one, and you would ask this question to yourself about that organism. Is it body kite-like in shape, or is it not kite-like in shape? And then you would work down through that dichotomous key from there. So hopefully that was beneficial. I'm Coach Boydston. Uh, let's do some dichotomous keys.